Hi, I'm Carol Andrews for another episode of Southwest TV News. Here are some of the stories we've been working on for today's show. The Saskatchewan Summer Games are a much anticipated event for athletes across the province. And as the athletes train for competition in their respective sports, communities put their best foot forward to host these events. This was an afternoon of celebration as Cypress Hills MP David Anderson joined guests at the Riverview Village Estates in Swift Current to announce funding for a historical reflection for local seniors. Swift Current Cobb High School students took to the streets on Monday to launch the Five Days for Change. The student-driven project involved 10 students and three teachers raising awareness of youth who were homeless in the community. Thanks for joining us here today. The city of Swift Current is known for its warm hospitality and volunteerism and has made a bid to host the 2016 Saskatchewan Summer Games. The Saskatchewan Summer Games are a much anticipated event for athletes across the province. And as the athletes train for competition in their respective sports, communities put their best foot forward to host these events. Swift Current Mayor and Council have voted in favor of making a bid to host the 2016 Saskatchewan Summer Games. Swift Current hosted the Games in 1976 and has since grown as a city, which could complement its bid for the 2016 event. We like the concept. Uh, we've applied for Games before, not often, but the last time was uh, we applied in 2001 to host the 2004 Summer Games. Um, we weren't successful in that bid. At the time, we were, uh, we were lacking, actually, in accommodations to, uh, to uh, host everyone. Uh, but also, our, we had a, a track that was inefficient. So we're hoping, hopefully with our new synthetic track uh, being uh, under construction this, this summer, um, our bid will look that much better. The 2016 Saskatchewan Summer Games would take place for one week, encompassing nine provincial districts with over 2,000 athletes, coaches and managers participating, and thousands of spectators in the stands, all benefiting the local economy. I think as part of their, the host package, what comes out is they, they say that uh, over a million dollars is, is normally established uh, as revenue garnered during games. Um, when we factor in um, everything that would take place in the community and you can't count everything, we expect that, that uh, to be probably five times as great. We expect the community and actually the region uh, to bring in about $5 million. The host site for the 2016 Saskatchewan Summer Games will be announced before the end of this year. The first Saskatchewan Summer Games were hosted in Moose Jaw back in 1972. Southwest TV News is hitting the road with our annual Summer Around the Southwest Tour, covering a variety of exciting events across the region. The Southwest TV News Summer Around the Southwest Tour is proudly brought to you by Innovation Credit Union. Imagine the possibilities. Trust the team at Pinnacle Financial to help you reach your financial goals. Whether you require personal or corporate income tax planning, bookkeeping, management consulting, or full-service mortgage brokering, our expert team has you covered. Contact us today to begin your climb to the top. A historical project for local seniors is coming to light following a federal grant. We have more in this report. This was an afternoon of celebration as Cypress Hills MP David Anderson joined guests at the Riverview Village Estates in Swift Current to announce funding for a historical reflection for local seniors. $25,000 will be invested by the federal government through its New Horizons for Seniors program to assist with the cause of the project, My Space, Our Space. A reflection of stories by seniors from Swift Current and area brought to life through a play, video and written component, plus a toolkit for other communities to use as a template for their own projects. A historical project which Anderson is pleased to see produced in his own writing. Well, I think from most of our perspectives we want to know what our, our forefathers went through and uh, there's a lot of stories about when they came here and settled and the, the way they grew up, especially through the 30s and, and early 40s and uh, I think those things are important. Our young people need to have that connection with the past 
and uh, certainly still lots of people in the area whose families go right back to uh, when the area was settled. Glenn Hanke is the general manager of Riverview Village Estates and indicates the project will come to life through a collaboration by seniors and other individuals across the southwest, including the screenplay, which will be written by Kathy Covert from the Miller College of the Bible. Personal stories of local seniors, which could unfold in many layers. One story is uh, from the younger seniors, how they have, uh, I guess, looked at their their parents and discussed with them how they're changing physically, emotionally, um, as they lose their spouse or whatever, their situation changes. And so there's a real story there and how do you deal with that aspect of your life? How do you uh, make those changes and help your mother or father? And the second part of that story is the actual seniors themselves, the super seniors I call them here, those 80 plus seniors who are actually making the move, downsizing, leaving things back in their house. It's a, it's a very difficult situation to get into with, uh, with many of our seniors where they make that change from their house to perhaps accommodations like here at Riverview. Stories for the project will be collected through the next several months with the showcase dinner theater event planned for the Sky Center in early 2014. Over the years, the New Horizons for Seniors program has funded over 12,200 projects across Canada. And this year, the program will invest over $33 million assisting over 1,750 projects involving seniors across the country. The following is a paid political commentary by David Anderson, MP for Cypress Hills Grasslands, and does not in any way reflect the opinion of Southwest TV News. Welcome to the May Anderson Report. Natural resources are critical to our province and its future. As one of Canada's leading energy producers, if we're going to continue to grow our province, we must be able to sell our products. Lately, the House of Commons Committee on Natural Resources has been studying the issue of market diversification and energy. The question we've asked is a simple one. Is it important for us to diversify our energy markets, or can we continue to rely on one main customer, the United States? The message we've heard loud and clear is that energy markets are changing rapidly. The U.S. has discovered oil and gas and is committed to developing them, becoming energy independent and selling their excess production around the world. Instead of being mainly a customer, they will be a competitor. This has highlighted just how critical it is that energy producing areas such as Alberta and Saskatchewan develop new markets. If we do not, the negative financial impact will be huge and it will be nationwide. We need new markets, especially in the growing economies of Asia. Pipelines need to be built south, west, and even east if we were to have that market access. Western access is especially critical and the timelines are tight. Those who would try to stop this are working directly against Saskatchewan and Canada's best interests. Saskatchewan's just gotten on its feet. What we're hearing in our committee is that we can move ahead if we develop resources and markets, but without new markets, we will be stopped in our tracks. Raising awareness and funds for homeless youth here in Swift Current was the focus of a week-long project called Five Days for Change. We have more in this report. Swift Current Cop High School students took to the streets on Monday to launch the Five Days for Change. The student-driven project involved 10 students and three teachers raising awareness of youth who are homeless in the community. Sean Whisker is a member of the Student Leadership Council and explains how the concept for the Five Days for Change came about. We were sitting in our Youth Advisory Council meeting and the youth uh, homelessness came up as one of our topics and we sat down and we had a good like hour-long discussion about it and we were all thinking about what we can do in our city to make this a, like make awareness so people know about it and uh, help them out because there is no place for them to go when they're kicked out on the streets so what we decided was that we would take a fundraiser that they do every year at the universities in our community and which is where they sleep outside for two days and we'd extend it across a whole week here in Swift Current in our own community. A project which Kevin Hanna supports and applauds the students for spearheading, as he and his group are also trying to bring the youth homeless issue into the spotlight and create a safe haven for those in need. We've got uh, lots of kids out there that uh, are uh, sleeping from couch to couch, uh, trying to find a 
safe place to live, uh, whether that's because of uh, family upheaval or coming back from uh, treatment centers and not wanting to go back into the same, same kind of situation that they left, uh, or uh, with mental health concerns or even health concerns where they need a place that they can transition back into either their home or back into the community. Over the five days, students camped out on the school lawn over the lunch hour and through the evening, with only the clothes on their back, cardboard and a blanket to sleep on, and food rations donated by community members. There were no daily showers unless they raised enough money. No outside contact through cell phones or other means. While giving the students the feeling of what it would be like to live out on the street. And after a few days of roughing it, students were starting to see the world in a different light and appreciate their own good fortune. Like it's just, it's crazy to think about like not knowing where your next meal is or not knowing where you're gonna stay and stuff like that. It's just, it's an eye opener. Most of my friends thought I was crazy. <laughs> one, because this is not my lifestyle at all. Just like spending the night like with no makeup, you only get one change of clothes, like it's such a reality shock. But I mean, I think people are really proud of us for like, because a lot of people don't know this is going on in Swift Current, so now that someone's out there Letting everyone know what actually does happen, I think they're proud of us too. While others found the experience as a way to develop new friendships. So in that way it's like really awesome to get to know everybody. But like even with just the homelessness, it kind of like makes you see like, like it makes you just kind of understand like what people are going through and like a way smaller scale than it actually is. As a broadcast time for this story, a final total raise through the five days for change was not available. However, the students were well on their way to raising the goal of $5,000 and making a youth shelter one step closer to becoming a reality in Swift Current. Well, this brings to a close another episode of Southwest TV News, reporting the stories that matter to you. We always welcome your news tips. You can always reach us here by phone at our studio or by email to contact us at southwesttvnews.com. Also, be sure to join us daily online for the latest news from across southwest Saskatchewan and so much more at mylocaltv.ca. And be sure to follow us on Facebook, Twitter and Pinterest. Thanks for joining us here today. I'm Carol Andrews.